After the so-called Russian presidential elections, Vladimir Putin began to make grand promises. The Russian president announced that the minimum wage in Russia will rise from 200 US dollars this year to 350 in six years. This is not the first time Putin has made such promises, and he has a history of not keeping them. This month, just a few weeks after the so-called Russian presidential elections, Putin, according to his tradition, has made some far-reaching promises. E. This time round, the president started talking about increasing the minimum wage from $200 to $370. By 2030, the minimum wage should almost double to 35,000 rubles. Recently, Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin has stated that the number of poor people in the Russian Federation is 13.5 million, which accounts for 9.3 percent of the country's population. Currently in Russia, a person is considered poor if they earn less than $150 a month, which falls below the subsistence minimum. Individuals earning, for instance, $170 are no longer classified as poor. Good economy, a government gives uh, enough money to, to build uh, roads, to build infrastructure. Uh, we feel no problems. In 2023, nearly 200,000 teachers left Russian schools. Independent journalists have calculated that this figure was the highest in seven years. Additionally, in 75 regions of Russia, teacher salaries are below the minimum wage, which is less than $200 per month. Putin has been in power for a quarter of a century now. Naturally, the question arises, if, in the absence of war and sanctions, in a situation where foreign countries were happy to buy our oil and gas, the head of state was unable to do anything of what he is talking about now, then what grounds do citizens have to assume that now, all of a sudden, he'll be able to deal with it? The fact is, many promises have been made during Putin's reign. For example, the promise to catch up with and overtake Portugal. This pledge was made at the very end of 1999, when the young Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin issued his manifesto, where he outlined his vision for the future of the country, which was about to come under his leadership. In order to achieve GDP production per capita at the level of modern Portugal or Spain, we will need approximately 15 years with a GDP growth rate of at least 8% per year. If we manage to maintain a GDP growth rate of 10% per year over the same 15 years, we will reach the current level of GDP production per capita of Great Britain or France. After Putin's four presidential terms, reaching Portugal's level remains elusive. According to the World Bank, in 2022, Russia's GDP per capita was approximately $15,000, whereas Portugal's was $24,500. At the onset of his second term, the head of state declared an active campaign against dilapidated social housing. Consequently, the battle against slums and poverty has been a recurring theme in Putin's speeches for almost a quarter of a century. However, in March this year, an extraordinary incident took place in the Saratov region. A resident of an old social housing apartment building in the city of Angles fell into the basement, flooded with sewage, along with her bathtub and toilet. According to the woman's neighbors, residents of the building had repeatedly complained about its condition, but the authorities refused to recognize it as unsafe. It was only after the bathroom, along with the apartment owner and her friend, collapsed into the basement that the mayor's office admitted that the apartment was uninhabitable. However, the rest of the building did not receive emergency status. Needless to say, the authorities are responsible for renovating social housing buildings. Thank you.